How to name carboxylic acids. Okay, these are easy too. They're not that bad at all. Okay, so carboxylic acids um, occur when you have just a second. You have a chain. You have it double bonded to an oxygen. And then immediately after that, you have another oxygen and a hydrogen. So this is the only time a carboxylic acid occurs. Okay. So how to name a carboxylic acid? Um, chum. Uh, where's my colors? There's my colors. Okay. So the first thing you do is find out how many carbons you have in here. So look at your carbon chain. Carbon chain is out here. Just ignore this and ignore this for now. And number your carbon chain. So we have one, no, too small. We have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So if this were an alkane consisting of just those six carbons, you would call this um, hexane. Um, because it's in Carboxylic acid, you no longer call it hexane, you call it hexan, hexanoic acid. Um, it's just that simple. Alright, so let's draw that out again and put some sort of a chain on it and see what happens then. So, same thing as before. So we're still going to have our hexanoic acid. But now we have this coming off of it. Ah, I'm, I'm undecidable. So we have this coming off. All right. So again, you have to treat that as a substituent as a branch. So this is a branch. Numbering again goes one, two, three, four, five. 6. So it's a branch off of our fifth carbon. So now we see that by numbering this way, as in if we were to number 1, 2, and then 3, 4, 5, 6, it would be lower. So you'd think we'd do that. However, that's not the case. Whenever you have a carboxylic acid or an uh, ester or an aldehyde, you're always going to start naming from the carbonyl group. This here is a carbonyl group. This is going to be your first carbon. All the time, no matter what. Okay, so let's get rid of those. Let's name this one. So again, if this were... Um, we know this is hexanoic acid. We already figured that out. And now there's a 5-methyl on the hexane part. So we go 5-methyl, hexanoic acid. Just that easy. It's not hard at all. Okay, I think that's pretty much it for hexanoic acids, or carboxylic acids. Uh, I, yeah, I can't really think of any other um, example you'd run into. I'll use these later because carboxylic acids always have name priority. So now I can name alcohols and ketones and ethers as substituents instead of as the primary group, which I'll do in later vi videos. Next video will be dedicated to alcohols.